bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Thank you that we can come together once again in the mighty name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Praise God. You give God the praise. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. Thank you that the church family can come together. Praise God. And thank God, thank God for the Internet, the online church. Thank God that people from all regions of the nation can come together. And we give God the praise for those who, will, who are online with us overseas. We thank God for our brother, David Carter in uh, Dubai, in the nation of Dubai. We thank God for our friends in Kenya. We thank God for our friends in other countries. And then we thank God for those of you who watch the, the replay, who watch the recording. And God moves through the recording, the anointing. There's an anointing on this ministry. Praise God. Not because we're so special, but because we serve a special God who loves you and cares about you. Some of you may have had a difficult week, a troublous week, some challenges, but bless God, you're here, you're alive, you're able to see the power of God move, and we just thank God. There's something about coming together on a Sunday morning. There's something about coming together as one body in Christ and seeking the Lord and resting in his presence. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. So we thank God. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. All over the world, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing God move. He's saving, saving souls in every nation. And so we trust God to continue doing what he's doing. We trust God to raise up pastors, preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, raise up missionaries, raise up the body of Christ to take the gospel to the whole world. We pray that everyone will have a chance to hear the gospel and to respond to it. And we pray that they will all say, yes, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior and Lord. That's the greatest gift you can receive. And that is the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. There's only one way in which a person can be saved. It is not by going to church. It is not by being baptized. It is not by lighting candles. It is not by giving your money. It is not by feeding the hungry or taking care of the poor and the needy. You must be born again, the Bible says. And there's only one way to be born again. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. And so we thank God that many of you have gathered your family uh, around your cell phone or your computer uh, and your iPad. And now we're just going to just trust the Lord that his message today is going to bless you. We're going to be preaching today about how to protect your children, part two. We're going to take up where we left off last week. And uh, if you missed last week's message, go to my YouTube channel or email me and get that message so that you can see what God is doing, what he wants to do in your family, how he loves each and every one, and he wants to bless the children. We're going to talk about how to handle, how to deal with rebellious children. And if you've got a child who's rebellious, if you have a child who gives you a lip, if you've got a child who will not obey you, uh, then there are certain things you need to do. We're going to look at that today, and we're going to look at how you operate in love, ladies and gentlemen. Operate in love. And so we're going to uh, get ready uh, to 
go into our message. We're, we're going to ask our, our, our friend Ryan, Ryan uh, up in Pennsylvania. Ryan, if you would lead us to the throne of grace, if you would pray for this ministry today, pray for the people. Can you do that for us, Ryan? Good morning, Pastor Curry, and yes, I will morning. lead this church in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. Uh, we want to thank you for this online ministry. Uh, we want to thank you for giving Pastor Carter the knowledge and wisdom uh, to preach, at, preach and teach the church today. Uh, we just we just want to bless you and praise you for everything you've done for everything and everybody around the world. Wayne that. And we just love you. We just love you and praise you and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, for your prayer. And uh, we give a shout-out to you and your family, uh, to Tara, to Jenna, and to all the people. Praise God. I want to welcome all, all the people on online. I see my niece, Wayne, that's on, and uh, so many others. We just thank God. We praise God. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your family. Now, if if you have already, listen, if you have already raised your children, you need to stay on and listen carefully today because there are, we know many people who are raising their children's children. You never know when they're going to come and, 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 and just drop the kids off. We know people who have dropped kids off and never went back and picked them up. Ladies and gentlemen, and we're, if your child, your child might be 50 years old. Your child might be 60 years old. You never stop raising your children. And so, uh, and this message will help, especially those of you who have rebellious children or those of you who have rebellious grandchildren or godchildren or stepchildren, or uh, you may be a teacher in school, you may be a babysitter, you may be a caregiver, and this message will help you to handle, to deal with rebellious children, no matter how old they are. Your child may be 50 years old, still living in your household, eating your food, sleeping in your bed, and, 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 and causing confusion. God's word will show you what to do. The Lord loves you. God does not want you going through turmoil and having to face drama. I know people who have, face, have to face drama every day in their lives, and a lot of the drama is coming through their children. Your child may be grown, uh, have his or her own household living in another part of the nation and the world. But if your child is not doing right, yes, that grieves your spirit. You can't blink your eye at the sins in your children. And, and yes, you've raised them. You've let them go. You've cut those apron strings, but they're still grieving you. Well, we're, we're going to show you today how you can get a good night's sleep, how you can rest, how you can deposit that child into the hands of Jesus, and you can get some sleep at night. Some of you are missing sleep. Some of you are grieved. And, and, and we want to minister today to uh, there are many people. You're in a second marriage or um, you're... You're raising children that did not come out of your womb or, or did not come out of your loins. And uh, you've got, uh, you might have a child in your household. When you try to correct that child, that child says, you can't punish me. You can't whip me. And you're not my father. And you can't tell me what to do. Well, you know, when a child gets like that, you've got to know how to, what to do. You can't smack the taste out of their mouth because the ACLU will take you to court. The, the cops will arrest you. The law is on the side of the rebellious child. You can't go into the classroom like we used to do when I was a kid. My mama could come into the classroom, and if I were not doing right, she would beat me in front of my fellow students. But you can't do that. They will arrest you. They'll put you in jail. The law supports the rebellious child. But there's a higher law, ladies and gentlemen. And so we're going to preach the word. I want to show you in the word of God today under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I want to show you how you can build a hedge of thorns around your rebellious child. I'm going to give you some, some scriptures. We're going to look at the way 
uh, they handled rebellious children back in the Old Testament days. And after I give you those scriptures, you'll say, thank God for grace. And children, if you're listening, you ought to thank God for grace and mercy too. Some of you are getting away with murder. Some of you children know how to manipulate your mom and pops. But God's word is going to shut you down. The game is up, kids. The game is up. If you have been a manipulator, a schemer, if you've known how to devise and divide and conquer, the game is up because your mom and dad are going to come into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and what God's word will says and what God will do. The game is up. And, 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 and we don't hate children. We love children. But we hate that devil. And the devil knows how to use children. The devil knows how to use grown-ups. The devil will use anybody he can. So we go, we're going to look today at how to protect the children. I want to give you some scriptures. Praise God. And um, you might want to write these scriptures down and read them later on. I have a list of scriptures that I want to share with you. Then we're going to go into looking at building that hedge of thorns. It is important. No matter how much you love your child, build that hedge of thorns around that child. I don't care if your child is 75 years old and you're still living. Mama, you need to build a hedge of thorns around that child and let the Lord do what he wants to do. Uh, so many people have been grieved and hurt by their children. And children, children, children know how to manipulate. You know that little... Uh, innocent thing that came out of your womb uh, or that little innocent thing that came out of your loins. Uh, uh, so innocent. Those children, those little babies look so innocent. But the Bible says we are born, we're shaped in iniquity. We're born in sin. What looks innocent uh, 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 can corrupt, can, can destroy. Uh, many people have been hurt by those little innocent looking things. Because Satan knows how to get into a child. Satan is, is, is an expert in getting into a child. And if you don't correct that child early on, that child can grow up to be a monster. Ladies and gentlemen, you can correct those things. So listen carefully. Uh, uh, look, look at the word of God and let's uh, obey the Holy Spirit. Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Psalm 127, 3 to 5 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. The man who has a lot of children... The Bible says those children are like arrows in that man's quiver. You can shoot those arrows. Your children can go further than you can go in life. They can reach more people. They can visit more areas. They can accomplish much more than you and I have accomplished. So if you train up those children in the way in which they should go, and that's our next scripture, Proverbs 22, 6, that if you train up the child in the way in which he or she shall go, when they're old, they will not depart from that training. Ladies and gentlemen, it's disturbing the number of people who do not train their children in the ways of the Lord. And, the, and it's more than taking them to church. Taking the child to church is not a guarantee that they're going to grow up to be a godly man or godly woman. Now, there are benefits in going to church, but you must be born again. Every child that has uh, pierced the womb has been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And every child, everyone on the face of the earth needs to be born again. No matter how popular that family is, no matter how pretty that child looks, that child must be born again. And if that child is not trained in the fear and admonition of the Lord, if that child is not taught about Jesus Christ, if that child is not taught about honoring God and worshiping God through Jesus Christ, that child has been done a great injustice. It's a great injustice to bring a child in this world and not train that child in the way of the Lord. 
You may say, well, that's condemning, Pastor Carter. Well, I'd rather offend you right now than to have you stand before God. And God will say, why did not you train your child in my ways? And, you, and, you, and you, if your answer is, well, I wanted my child to like me. Well, I didn't want my child to grow up hating me. Ladies and gentlemen, I would rather have a child hating me than to uh, uh, be disobedient to God and shirk my responsibility to train that child in the way of the Lord. Proverbs 22, 15. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. A child's heart is full of foolishness. Some of you know that. Some of you have experienced that. Some of us have done foolish things when we were children. Some of us know the foolish things our children do. It, children can blindside you with their foolishness because foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. But look at the rest of Proverbs 22, 15. But the rod of correction shall drive it from him. Oh, Pastor Carter, you mean you're teaching about beating my children and whipping the child? Uh, uh, that's 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 uh, uh, that's not a good thing to do. That's uh, not popular today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we have a nation like we have now. Look at all those all those innocent children who have grown up to be monsters. Look at Washington D.C. Look at everything from the White House to your house. Look at the monsters in public office today. The liars, the deceivers. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what is fake news and what's good news because these little innocent children who were not corrected by their parents, did not grow in the fear and admonition, admonition of the Lord. Now they're in public office. They're in the national office. They're in the state office. They are even local officials. You don't know who to believe today, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know what politician to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, there, Satan has so many liars all over the place that you have to discern. Now, look, I'm not getting into politics. I'm not getting into the Republican and Democratic Party because I ain't going there. But I do know this. You need to discern, and you need to put God above political party. You need to put the Holy Spirit above political party. Ladies and gentlemen, it is disturbing the number of people who line up with one political party, and everything they say and do is holy. Ladies and gentlemen, that is dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people who have kicked God out of their lives, and their God now is their political party. We need to repent and go back to the Lord and listen to the word of God. It is the word of God that's going to deliver this nation. It's the word of God. And we have so many children, innocent children, but they were not trained in the ways of the Lord. And many, uh, Satan, Satan got into them early. And Satan knows. Satan knows. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get into a political office, you need to be on the watch out from Satan. I don't care who you are. He will use all he can. His job is to destroy, kill, and rob. He wants to take this nation down. He wants to take Kenya down. He wants to take Nigeria down. He wants to take China down. He wants to take Russia down. He wants to take Syria down. He wants to take down every nation. He wants to destroy, and he takes these innocent little children, and he grooms them from childhood into manhood or womanhood, and he creates a race of liars and deceivers. And ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the world today, whether it's the United States of America or your nation, there are uh, people who, who they know how to speak the lie, twist the lie, turn the lie, deceive people, and there's so much deception. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you don't know how to pray and how to discern, and if you don't know how to let the Holy Spirit guide you, you can be deceived. The Bible says the very elect shall be deceived. And so uh, we're, saying, we're saying how to protect your child. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're living in this kind of world today, what kind of world do you think your children are going to be in 25 years from now? And so it is important that you guide them in the way in which they should go and correct them. We're going to teach you in a few minutes how to correct them when they get off base. 
Proverbs 23:13 says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Proverbs 23:14, Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Now, I'm not talking all about beating a child, because uh, uh, ch children should be punished. I got beat when I was a child, and I beat my children. But I did it with love, and I did it for the purpose of godly correction. Proverbs 29, 15, listen to this. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Oh, there are so many mothers today who are ashamed. They get those, these monthly calls from their children who are in prison. They get these uh, calls from the children who are out there on drugs, out there uh, homeless. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many grieved mothers, so many grieved fathers, and so many are, are feeling the pain. Oh, I wish I had shown more uh, correction with my child early on. Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain things you cannot undo, but there is a way of escape. The Bible says that uh, uh, that there is a way to escape. God will make a way to escape. So if you have missed it in the process of training your children, there is a way to escape, and there is a way to get your child delivered. Yes, your child can be the president of the United States. Your child can be Senator <coughs> so-and-so. Your child can be in the House of Representatives. Your child may, may be out there uh, just, just embarrassing everything you taught them. Your child may be saying things and doing things. Your child may be introducing legislation in this nation that is corrupt and anti-God, but you can shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, as, as parents of these children, whether they are grown or whether they are small, you have authority. You have kingdom authority. And so we're going to talk about building the hedge of thorns around your children, how you can protect your children. So we're not talking about just little children. We're talking about how you can protect your children and how you can get them saved, how you can change them from ungodly children into godly people. And I say ungodly because any child who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you've got children living in your household, no matter how innocent they are, no matter how sweet they are, no matter how well they wash the dishes, no matter how, much, how well they make up their own beds, if they don't know Jesus, they're on their way to destruction. And it is up to you to train them in the way that they should go. It's a mandate. It is not an option, ladies and gentlemen. I know so many parents who say, oh, I let them make their decision for themselves. I'm not going to force them to go to church. I'm going to let them make their own decision. That's the worst thing a parent can say. That is the most stupid thing a parent can say. I'm going to let them make up their own mind. Ladies and gentlemen, make up their own mind about what? What? There are only, there are only two choices, Satan or God. Uh, if you let them make up their own mind and you don't teach them about God, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize your child is going to go the way of the ungodly people. So it's up to you to stand up to the plate and, 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 and do what God says do. So many people are afraid. So many Christians have let the, let the ball go, let the ball drop. And then here's what happens. When their children get in trouble, when the household gets embarrassed, when the family gets embarrassed, then they run to the church, and the church is supposed to stop what they're doing and minister. Ladies and gentlemen, you can prevent that now by taking the necessary steps. Your marriage, get your marriage in order. Get your children in order. By the way, let's take up something we mentioned last week. I mentioned last week that before uh, couples get married, the church ought to mandate, ought to have mandatory classes on marriage, pre-marital Premarital counseling ought to be mandatory. When, if a couple wants to get married and they don't have any children yet and, and they're uh, in productive age, ladies and gentlemen, they need to get counseling. Pastor, you need to give them some counseling. They need to know, well, uh, how are they going to 
correct their children when they have children or or let's say a couple comes to you and both have been divorced and they're going to remarry and both have children the pastors ought to ask them how are you going to discipline your children when you bring children together because there are so many children they know the game they know how to manipulate you they know how to put a man in bondage you're not my father you can't tell me what to do and these children have the backup of their mother and the mothers tell the tell the tell the husband no you can't punish him you're not his father that's the worst thing you can do that is why so many households are divided that's why so many children are goofed up they think they can get away but ladies and gentlemen what goes around comes around these things that you're neglecting to do you're going to have to deal with them ladies and gentlemen let us not produce generations of, of children and grandchildren great-grandchildren who are godless who have no fear of God don't just take them to church but teach them the Word of God in your household train up a child in the way in which he or she should go set the example before them yes yes I am an advocate I am a staunch advocate of holding a family altar once a week every family ought to have a family altar in which mother and father and children sit down and study the scripture and the father ought to take the lead even if the wife may be the pastor the father ought to take the lead and train the children teach them and the wife should come under his submission he's the head of the household I believe that every family ought to have a family altar what a pastor called that's radical yes it's radical but it works it worked for my house and it's working in my children's household that you call a family altar once a week set aside a half hour set aside an hour to minister to your family husband take the lead wife support the husband be in agreement minister to the children teach them the ways of the Lord pray for them here's another thing if ladies and gentlemen you see something in your child that ought not to be let's say your child is stealing or your child is lying or your child is starting to hang out with the wrong people ladies and gentlemen why blink your eye at it stop blinking your eye at it because if you blink your eye at one thing before long it's a big thing next thing you know your child is arrested next thing you know your child has a record because you blinked your eye ladies and gentlemen if you know that your child is gay has tendencies of, of uh, 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 a boy child wants to play with uh, uh, dolls if you're a boy child is, is, is has a has a boyfriend or a girl child has a girlfriend I mean they're fondling one another ladies and gentlemen you need to stop blinking your eye at it and you need to learn how to build a hedge of thorns we're talking about radical Christianity we're talking about doing what the church should have been doing a long time ago ladies and gentlemen yesterday here in Atlanta they had a gay pride parade I mean they came out they came out trans uh, dressing and all that and 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 they came out of the closet I mean and, and will you say well the, con the Constitution says everybody has a freedom of assembly yes but the Constitution is not God's law ladies and gentlemen there's a law that supersedes the Constitution yes the Constitution guarantees us the right of assembly but the Constitution uh, 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 and the Constitution even protects gays and lesbians but ladies and gentlemen God is grieved at the way men are sleeping with men and women are sleeping with women there is a law God's law and ladies and gentlemen we're blinking our eyes at it and everybody says it's all right because they're afraid of the ACLU or they don't uh, want to be disliked uh, pastors are afraid to preach in their congregations because they want to don't want to lose that money that offering they want to be popular with people but ladies and gentlemen we've got to stay in the Word of God we've got to preach the Word of God we're going to be accountable we're going to be held accountable for all the things we blinked our eyes at and let those things go so we're talking about today how to protect your children how to protect them ladies and gentlemen long after I'm gone my children will be here their children will be here 
their children's children will be here. And, and, and what they do, what I do now, is going to impact my children for, for generations to come. What you do with your children is going to impact your children from, for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine the world, what it would be like when your grandchildren are adults? Can you imagine the challenges they will be presented? Can you imagine the satanic oppression? That is why we've got to train them now in the way in which they should go. And ladies and gentlemen, if you see something in your child that should not be, if your child is a liar, if your child is, uh, 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 your, your, your young daughter is practicing fornication, your son is practicing fornication, your son has um, uh, sex magazines under his pillow, you've got to do something about that. Don't just take that magazine and say, now explain this. No, you've got to shut it down. You can shut this activity down by building a hedge of thorns around your child. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish the church would get this teaching. I pray that the church would get this teaching. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help people to receive this teaching. I pray that the church will do what we're supposed to do. The church meaning the born-again believers. I'm not talking about the people who sit up there and, and take notes. I'm not talking about the people who who think they're members of the church because they're baptized or they were sprinkled as infants. I'm talking about the blood washed, the born again by the Spirit of God. We have responsibility. Jesus purchased redemption for us. He purchased new life for us. He paid the price for us. He's given to the church the keys to the kingdom. Jesus Christ went into hell and whipped up on the devil and took the authority back that Satan has stolen from Adam. Jesus has given to us, the church, the keys to the kingdom. And the scripture says, whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, when is the church going to wake up and use the keys to the kingdom? When are we going to honor God and obey him? We've got to stop blinking our eyes because our children are cute. We've got to stop uh, encouraging them to sin. We've got to stop uh, 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 calling it uh, problems and challenges. We've got to nail that sin where it is and build that hedge of thorns. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Old Testament justice. Old Testament justice. I want to give you a little bit about Old Testament justice. Then you're going to be so glad that you're living in the time of the New Testament under grace. In the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says, Leviticus 29, 20, verse 9. Leviticus 20, verse 9. For everyone that curseth his mother or his father shall be surely put to death. He that hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. My friends, in the Old Testament, if a child cursed his mother or cussed out his father, that child was to be stoned to death. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Here's another one. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. Read these scriptures. Deuteronomy 18, 21. Chapter 21, 18 through 21. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when he hath chastened him will not hearken to them. Listen to this. If a man is stubborn or a child is stubborn, and you have chastised that child, but they're still rebellious, they will not hearken to your, your voice in the Old Testament. Here's what they would do. Then the parents should take the son to the elders of the city, and the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shall thou put away evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and, and fear. In the Old Testament days, if a child was rebellious, and the parents chastened, chastised the child, and the child continued in rebellion, the parents could take that child to the elders of the city. Turn that child over to the elders of the city. And the elders would command that that child be stoned to death. 
you may say, wow, that's mean. That's, 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 that's child abuse. That is not child abuse. That is protecting your family from embarrassing God when that child gets old. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants children to be corrected. They ought to be corrected. But, you know, we're living in America, the United States of America. We've got the Constitution. You can do anything. Children can do anything, and the, the law will protect them. The law will lock you up for beating on your child, for punishing your child. Your child can call the cops on you uh, because you gave them a bad look. You rolled your eyes at them. You lifted up your finger against them. You can be arrested. The law is goofed up, ladies and gentlemen, but God's law does not change. God says train up a child in the way in which he should go. There are pit people locked up now because they discipline their children. But God is on the side of a godly parent. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Here's another Old Testament justice example. In 2 Kings chapter 2, 23 to 25, let me read these verses. 2 Kings chapter 2, 23 to 25. This is about Elisha, the prophet Elisha. Elijah had already gone into heaven. He went into heaven in a fiery chariot. Everybody in Israel saw, many people in Israel saw that event take place. A fiery chariot came and scooped Elijah up. And as Elijah was rising up into the heavens in a fiery chariot, he dropped his coat, his mantle, and the mantle fell on Elisha, the prophet whom Elijah had trained to take his place. And here's Elisha. The scripture says, and he went up, meaning Elisha, thence from from thence unto Bethel and as he was going up by the way there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him go up thou bald head go up thou bald head and he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord and there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them ladies and gentlemen that's in the scripture the scripture the children now children the word children uh, the word the Hebrew word for children could mean uh, people of almost any age uh, 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 they could be 28 years old 39 years old these were wayward uh, men rebellious young men could they could have been used they could have been young men they rebelled and they dishonored the man of God they dishonored that miracle that God performed God swooped Elijah up in a fiery chariot and and the the young men mocked Elisha who had received the anointing the prophetic anointing of Elijah and they said uh, go up bald head go up bald head they dis respect the man of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a nation, in a world where they disrespect men and women of God. We, we're living in a nation where your children may disrespect you because you're born again. They disrespect you in not obeying what you tell them to do. And so in, old, in the Old Testament, when these young men mock the prophet of God go up bald head go up bald head God raised up ladies and gentlemen the scripture says God raised up two she bears two she bears one of the worst things you want to do in this life is wrestle with a she bear a she bear will tear you to bits a she bear is worse than a he bear two she bears came and tore up 42 of those young men 42 of them were killed, destroyed. That was justice. That was justice. The prophet cursed them. The prophet put a curse on them because they disobeyed the prophet. And in disobeying the prophet, they disrespected God. They disrespected the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got somebody in your household today who is disrespecting you, disrespecting your love with the Lord, your walk with the Lord, if your husband's disrespecting you, if your children are disrespecting you, I'm not saying put a curse on them, but you can put the word of God on them, ladies and gentlemen, by building a hedge of thorns around them. Ladies and gentlemen, we get uh, many scriptures about the hedge of thorns. Ezekiel 22:30 says, And I sought for a man among them who was standing in the gap before me and make up the hedge that I may not destroy the land. God said he's searching. 
in Second Chronicles 16:9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. God is looking for a man or a woman. He's looking in your household, in your family, for one person to build a hedge of thorns around your household. Build a hedge of thorns around uh, uh, your husband if he's not doing right. Build a hedge of thorns around your wife if she's not doing right. Build a hedge of thorns around your children. If you're not getting any respect from your children, you need to build a hedge of thorns. Rather than uh, 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 cast them off to Old Testament uh, justice, God has given us a period of grace. Grace and mercy can bring your children back to their right minds, to where they ought to be. If they're not saved, they're not born again, they're not in their right minds. They need to give their hearts to Jesus. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we need to pray a hedge of thorns around them. You can pray a hedge of thorns around your friends in school, Nathan. You can pray a hedge of thorns around your teacher. If your teacher is not teaching right, if your teacher is teaching stuff that is contrary to the Word of God, you can pray a hedge of thorns, Nathan, around your teacher, around your classmates. You can pray a hedge of thorns, uh, my friends, uh, around your children. Children, you can pray a hedge of thorns around your parents. Young people, if your parents are not doing right, if your daddy is out there doing wrong, your mom is doing wrong, you can build a hedge of thorns around them. Parents, you can build a hedge of thorns around your children. We're talking today about uh, protecting the children, but we're hitting the whole household because God wants every household to be saved. He wants peace and harmony. He wants Jesus Christ to be the Lord of our households. Well, look at Job. Job's children were protected. The devil said, uh, I can't do anything against Job because you have a hedge around him. But when God said, I will take the hedge away from him, but don't take Job's life. And the devil went and killed Job's kids, who, whom Job had protected for all those years through his prayers. And, and, and those children were not doing anything. They were ungodly. They were partying. They were corrupt. They were depending on their father's prayers. And, and, and so uh, Job, uh, God removed the hedge, and Job's children got killed. And, and uh, God, God wants us to build our head to thorns. We can look at other scriptures. Hosea, his wife was corrupt. She was not a good woman. She was not faithful, loyal to her, her husband. And she went back on the block and started doing those things that people on the block do. And, and, and the man of God was there, left at home with three children. Those children said, Daddy, why is Mama living like this? And, 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 and this man was humiliated, embarrassed by the neighbors. And so God told him, I will build a hedge of thorns around her. I want you to go and, 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 and buy her back. She's for sale. She's on the auction block. She's being sold as a sex slave. You purchase her back, bring her home. And this is what I want you to do when you bring her home. When you bring her home, you speak nice things to her. Don't remind her of her sin. Don't beat her. Don't abuse her. Don't corrupt her. But I want you to walk in love. I know no matter how much she's hurt you, uh, Hosea, I want you to bring her back and love her and speak godly words to her. Speak nice things to her. And cast down any vain imaginations, anything she says that's not godly. You gently and lovingly cast it down by the word of God. And, 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 and I will allure, allure her, and I will bring her into my wilderness, and I will teach her, and I will let her know that uh, she was much better off with you than out there in the world, and I will protect her from the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, when you build a hedge of thorns, You'll say, well, Pastor, what's a hedge of thorns? Well, if you've got hedges around your house, hedges around your property, imagine a hedge with pickies, briars, and a hedge of thorns. A hedge of thorns keeps animals out. Animals, even the cats and dogs, uh, the, the foxes, the wolves, they don't want to come through that hedge of thorns because they'll be bruised. It's like picking blackberries, blackberry bushes. Have 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 uh, briars. I know Jackie and I know because we picked a lot of blackberries this year. And and and, uh, and you stick your hand in, you, your hands get stuck. 
They hurt. Ouch. Ooh, ouch. Ooh. Well, it's the same thing with the hedge of thorns. When the devil tries to get in, he's saying, ouch, ooh, ouch, ooh. Or when uh, uh, the drug dealers try to get to your son or your daughter to sell them drugs, and you build a hedge of thorns around your children, ouch, ooh, ouch, ooh. We can't, we can't sell drugs to that guy anymore. Or if your son or daughter's out there selling drugs, uh, the hedge of thorns, uh, people who want to buy from them, ouch, ooh, ouch, ooh. They can't penetrate. They can't make the deal. They can't cut the deal. The hedge of thorns has two purposes. The hedge of thorns protects the evil one from coming in the evil one cannot penetrate satan will try to get to your child try to influence your child child try to get your child to keep on cussing you out but when you build that hedge of thorns satan will will be frustrated in his attempt god will build a hedge of protection around that child and if your child wants to cuss at you wants to go out and commit drugs wants to go out and commit fornication, wants to go out drinking with his, his or her buddies. They can't be successful. They can't get out. They can't get there. And when they do reach their buddies, their buddies say, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. Or, or uh, 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 that girlfriend, the son, God, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. I, I, no, no, I got a new boyfriend. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're talking about ouch, ooh, ouch, ooh. God will protect your children. And then, after you build that hedge of thorns, you've got to start teaching the Word of God. You've got to start teaching your Word of God, whether it's to your husband or to your wife. You've got to teach the Word of God in your household. You've got to cast down vain imaginations. If your children uh, have ungodly answers, you've got to give them godly answers through the Word of God. We're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, taking back what the devil stole from us. The devil stole a lot of our family from us when they were little infants, little children. We blinked their eyes when they uh, 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 broke furniture, when they uh, 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 spat at us, when they uh, uh, did ungodly things, when they disobeyed, we blinked their eyes. No, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to repent, and we've got to get on the problem. Those of you who are raising little children right now, get on the problem. The Bible says spare the rod and, and you spoil the child. The Bible says you can beat your child. You won't kill them. It's all right to correct them. If you get arrested, uh, I call the church. The church will raise up some money and bail you out, but you stand on the word of God. Amen. Because if you don't, if you don't stand on the word of God, if you blink your eyes at your children and you know they're doing wrong and you do not build a hedge of thorns around them, you are just sending your children off to prison. You're sending your children off to the death squad. You're sending them off to the drive-bys. You're sending them off to venereal disease. You're sending them up to uh, 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 ambush, being ambushed by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, if you blink your eyes, you're setting them up for destruction. Not only will they be destroyed, but their souls will perish in hell. I don't want it. I don't want any blood on my hand, hands because I refuse to train my children in the ways of God. My children know, and they can tell you, Dad raised up in the, us up in the fear of the Lord. Mom and Dad taught us about the ways of the Lord. And so whichever way they choose, it is no longer on me. It is on them, ladies and gentlemen, but we can still save our households. We can get our children saved. If your baby is 50 years old, you can still get that baby saved. How? By building a hedge of thorns around that person. Those of you who have my email, you can email me, and I will send you a prayer that you can use to build a hedge of thorns around your wayward rebellious children if you if you have a teenager who's rebellious I will send you a prayer how to protect a rebellious teenager if you have a small child I will send you a prayer to pray to protect that small child if your husband ain't doing right I'll send you a prayer to get him delivered if your wife ain't doing right I'll send you a prayer to pray to get her delivered it's all in using the <coughs> keys to the kingdom that Jesus has given us. It's all about using the authority 
Why? Because God wants righteous families. He does not want to destroy. The scripture says God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given us the keys. He's shown us the way. It's up to us to do something about this. God does not want your family to perish, nor does he want you to perish. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are saying, but it's too late, Pastor. It's too late. No, no, I'll contrary. It is never too late. It is never too late. There's always a time to rebuild. That is why the new birth is so wonderful. You can be born again. You can be 90 years old on your deathbed, and you can call upon the name of the Lord, and he will save you. You can be 67 years old, and, and, and uh, you could have been a liar, a cheater, a deceiver all your life, but you can repent and call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. You can be, you can be 75 years old. And, and you've been a liar, a gambler, a cheater, a no good, a no good Nick all your life. But you can remember the training that your parents gave you. And you can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. So ladies and gentlemen, don't give up. Don't quit. You build the hedge of thorns. Listen, listen. God is not going to build it on his own. God is only going to build this hedge of thorns if you open up your mouth and pray. And then... Once you pray, once you know that your rebellious child has a hedge around him or her, no matter what happens to them, you let God, you ask God every day, keep that hedge around them. Keep that hedge around them until that yoke is broken, until that yoke is destroyed. Don't remove that hedge, ladies and gentlemen. Look, 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 just because your rebellious wife starts acting sweet to you, well, it's near her birthday. She gonna, of course she's going to act sweet because she wants that money. She wants those gifts. Or, ladies and gentlemen, your husband, uh, he, he's spending the weekends home. He ain't gone out, uh, as he says, gambling or shooting pool with his buddies. He, gonna, he wants to spend the weekend with you uh, 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 because he's after something. Ladies and gentlemen, even when he or she shows signs of relinquishing uh, the, and, 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 and turning from their sin, keep that hedge around them. Keep that, build that hedge around your uh, rebellious children and keep it there. Because if you don't keep it there, rebellious children grow up to be rebellious men and women. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I thank God for you. I bless God. I thank God for the hedge of thorn. It works. The hedge of thorns works. How do I know? It works on me. It has been used on me. I've even prayed the hedge of thorns around myself. Ladies and gentlemen, when you know your thoughts are not right and your intentions are not right, you can build a hedge of thorns around yourself. Praise God. And then you'll be so frustrated. You won't be able to hit, score, cop, do whatever you, you, you're, you're used to doing. You'll meet frustration after frustration. So pray that hedge of thorns. Pray that your children be frustrated in all their attempts to be rebellious. Because rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. If you let your children continue to rebel, it won't be long before they're dabbling with witchcraft. And ladies and gentlemen, you can shut that down now by asking God, to build a hedge of thorns around them. And when you do it, you do it with love. It's tough love, but you do it with love. And let God do what he wants to do. If those children have to go to prison because of their rebellion, they refuse to obey you, let them go to jail. Let them go to jail. You let God use whatever means necessary to break that yoke of sin and rebellion. Praise God. This is Pastor Carter. I thank God for the word. We give God the glory and the honor, and we thank you. Father, let, we're, I want to pray for every family now. I want to pray for every family. Lord God, I lift up every family that's listening to this message, whether they're listening live or by recording. I pray for those who are facing challenges, facing issues, not only from their children but from other members of the household. I pray, Lord God, that you'll help them. Help them, Father, to forgive their, their, their family members and then help them to ask you to build a hedge of thorns around them. Build that hedge of thorns around every rebellious person, Lord, 
in the name of Jesus. And God, break every yoke of sin and bondage. And Lord, stretch forth your mighty hand to save and deliver. Bring back the backslider, Lord. Heal marriages, Lord God. Uh, correct children. Help them to come under the authority of their parents. Help wives to submit themselves to their husbands in a godly manner. And help husbands to love wives as Jesus Christ loved the church. Lord God, harmonize the family. Bring peace in our families. Rebuke the devourer. Satan, the Lord rebuke you, devil. We bind you, devil, by the authority of the name and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we command in the name of Jesus that you loose every household, every family. We command that you release them into the perfect will of God. And then, devil, every demon, I command in the name of Jesus that you go back to the abyss. Go back to the pit of hell and stay there until your time comes to be emptied into the lake of fire. Lord God, we praise you and bless you and honor you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, if there be anyone who's listening who is not saved, I pray that they will receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God.